Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin our press conference in about two minutes. Uh, we anticipate about 30 minutes for the press conference. We will introduce first to you our vice rector, Mark Warden, W-A-R-D-E-N. He will be followed by president, provost, and dean of Eastern Virginia Medical School, Richard V. Homan, H-O-M-A-N. He will then be followed by McBib Gameta, M-E-K-B-I-B, Gameta, G-E-M-E-D-A, who is our Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. After that, we'll take a round of questions, and then we'll conclude in about 30 minutes. Again, we'll be starting in about two minutes. Thank you. For Mark Warden, W-A-R-D-E-N. He is the Vice Rector for Eastern Virginia Medical School. He will be the first person to speak after I introduce him. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin. I'd like to introduce our Vice Rector for Eastern Virginia Medical School, Mark Warden. Good afternoon and thank you for coming. On behalf of the EVMS Board of Visitors, I first want to say that we firmly believe there is no place for these types of photos and we regret what has happened. On behalf of the Board, we sincerely apologize. The Board was made aware of the yearbook photo issue Friday afternoon and we immediately directed the president to take action. So under the direction of the board, Dr. Homan has created the Community Advisory Board. Under the direction of the board, he's engaged an outside law firm to conduct an independent third-party investigation into how such clearly offensive and unacceptable photos came to be published in the yearbooks in the past. This investigation will be fully independent, it will not be restricted in scope, and will be fully transparent. We are committed to finding the truth and being transparent in this process. We held a board meeting early Monday morning, and the full board affirmed the actions the president has taken thus far. We have supported the actions of the president and his management team since Dr. Homan's arrival here at EVMS and their work on diversity and inclusion. The board believes in the professionalism, the competence, and compassion of our students, our staff, and our faculty. We believe we will learn from this and become a stronger institution because of it. At this time, I'd like to turn things over to President Homer. Thank you, Vice Rector uh, Warden, and thanks so much for having the opportunity to speak with you today. We appreciate the opportunity to share you with more information and then have an opportunity for you to be able to ans ask questions of me and the individuals that are here representing EVMS. As you know, the past EVMS yearbooks have contained shockingly abhorrent pictures that are antithetical to the values and principles of our professions. Some are shockingly racist, some are repugnant, and others are unprofessional and appropriate. We all recognize that racism has no, and discrimination has no place in our society and certainly not in a health sciences institution. We are acutely hurt by the events which occurred, but it does not compare to the feelings of outrage and pain for our minority and African American community here at EVMS, Virginia, and around the nation. The emotional wounds they endure are enormous. I want to express my sincere apologies particularly to the African-American communities who were most injured from the pictures of the yearbooks and those pictures which have been circulated in the press over the last few days. I am so sorry for the pain that, is, that has inflicted upon you. But now 
Where do we go from here? And as you recall, we established the Community Advisory Board to perform an independent assessment of the culture and operations of EVMS. We have the authority, they will have the authority to investigate any aspect of EVMS they believe is important. The chair of that Community Advisory Board is Gilbert Bland, a man who is esteemed in the business community, a leader with integrity, fairness, and the trust of our community. He is also the president and CEO of the Urban League of Hampton Roads. One member from our faculty, Dr. L.D. Britt, will also serve as one of the members of the Community Advisory Board. He is the chair of surgery, the former past president of the American College of Surgeons, and esteemed as a national leader in surgery and medicine nationally and internationally. Dr. Edward Ayers, former president of the University of Richmond, will also serve on this board, as will a few others to be determined in the coming days. Now on Sunday, February 3rd, the Board of Visitors, Rector and Vice Rector, directed me to hire an outside law firm to do a detailed and objective third-party investigation. We engaged Richard Cullen and his team on McGuire Woods that day. He is a former Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia, a former U.S. Attorney, and highly regarded in the legal profession. The Community Advisory Group and Mr. Cullen's group will work in parallel and collaboratively and cooperatively. A single report will be issued to the Board of Visitors and the public. The intent is to create a transparent, open, objective, and thorough process of the findings of fact, conclusions, and recommendations. Yesterday, I had time to meet with our internal stakeholders. We met with the senior management group at 7.30, the leadership team at EVMS. As Vice Rector Warden mentioned, the Board of Visitors held an emergency meeting at 7.45. And at noon, I conducted a town hall meeting with over 400 staff, faculty, and students attending. I met, met later that afternoon with the student government leaders, the members of the Student National Medical Association local chapter, many minority students, and then our chairs of our departments. Now at this point, I'd like to clarify one comment I made yesterday. I noted in our emergency board meeting Monday morning that three troubling photos had appeared in the 2003 yearbook. Mr. Gametta, our Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, brought the 2013 yearbook to me and informed me of some troubling photos in very early 2014. I did not know that EVMS published yearbooks at that time. I was appalled by the pictures and directed our Vice President of Diversity and our Vice Dean of Academic Affairs that there would be no more yearbooks at EVMS. But it came to my attention last night that students were looking at dis discontinuing the publication because of cost and lack of interest. I was unaware of these discussions. While the students made a decision based on cost, I made the decision based on content. Notwithstanding, there are no more published yearbooks since the 2013 edition. Now before you move on, let me be very clear. There are many circumstances we need to clarify. That's why we hired the independent law firm to investigate. That's why we have to be very careful about making comments without the benefit of the investigation. However, I do not need a report to know that this situation was the ultimate responsibility of our institution, of EVMS, and not the students. Our students are bright, compassionate, dedicated, and skilled. They're extraordinarily competent and caring individuals. That's why they chose EVMS to be with other like students that share that passion. We are so proud of them and we're confident in the work that they do and the high quality care they provide when they graduate. Now seven years ago, 
I came to EVMS having been a dean at two other schools in the United States. I knew of its reputation of providing outstanding education for students, residents, and the wonderful faculty that they have here. They had excellent research programs and a very high regard in primary care. They were dedicated to teaching the next generation of healthcare professionals, scientists, and physicians. The reputation at that time was outstanding as it is today. We enjoy support from our generous community leaders, and we've had the opportunity to develop a wonderful institution. So given that context, we are serious about finding the facts of what happened. We want to be sure that we are transparent and open and have the ability to ensure that the public can have the trust of EVMS and that our students, faculty, and alumni who do such great work every day, caring for the communities they do, can be assured that this institution continues to do its great work. So I want to thank all of them for the commitment to medicine and health professions here at EVMS. At this time, I'd like to introduce McBib Gametta, Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, to the podium to discuss our efforts to enhance the culture of diversity and inclusion. Mr. Gametta. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, as uh, President uh, Holman mentioned, uh, the mission of this institution was one of the, the reasons why I joined this institution um, shortly after he did. Um, and, um, and the opportunity to, uh, to drive this mission of community orientation um, through diversity and inclusion efforts. And, and I believe we have done uh, we have made significant efforts through the past six years at this institution to advance diversity and inclusion. Um, some of the efforts include um, looking at how we diversify our trainees. And we started with uh, implementing holistic review in our admissions process, training all our admissions committee to facilitate review of various qualities that students bring to our school beyond the academic metrics. We doubled the number of um, minority students in our MD program in the past two years, reaching 20% of the, the last two classes. We have increased the number of uh, underrepresented minority students in, in our health professions program as well. Um, we approach about 30, over 30% 30 of our students across the school are underrepresented minorities uh, uh, in the uh, health professions and medical programs. We have developed a mentoring community across in, in Hampton Roads that, it, that includes uh, pre-medical students at colleges in the area, including the, the historically, uh, 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 historically black colleges and universities, such as Hampton University and, uh, and uh, Norfolk State University, to, to engage them, to engage students in, in mentoring programs across the school. Uh, which involves our medical students here, uh, community physicians in the, in the community who are underrepresented minorities. We have also um, increased the pipeline programs we have uh, in the pre-K and tw through 12 programs, working with organizations uh, such as the 200 plus black men uh, to engage uh, high school students who are black men into, the, into, into health professions because we have highlighted in our publications and in, in engaging in conversations uh, where we showed that uh, uh, black uh, uh, students, actually African-American uh, students are lacking in, in, medical, in medical school and we have made uh, particular efforts in that area. We have also implemented policies to increase the, the number of uh, uh, faculty and leadership that come from underrepresented groups. Uh, increasing uh, uh, that effort uh, with search policies that includes implicit bias training in the search process and, uh, and policies uh, to diversify the, the search committees in, in this effort. The training uh, uh, programs that we have implemented across the board 
uh, include implicit bias training for everyone that is required in the, in the institution, uh, from staff to leadership to faculty to trainees. Uh, our board of visitors may be the, uh, one of the few boards in the nation at medical schools who have undergone uh, implicit bias training. Uh, we have also engaged the community in, in numerous efforts uh, to have conversations on social justice and, and health disparities, um, the bringing speakers and programs that engage our students and trainees and local communities and physicians in the community in conversation on how we improve the health of, the, of our community and address health disparities. All in all, we have made significant progress at this institution uh, to, uh, to address the, 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 the persistent health disparities and inequities that exist in the nation. And, um, and, and, and I believe that the reflection and the retrospection that we are going to have through this challenging process uh, will increase our efforts and, uh, and help our students to be the most competent in, 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 in serving the, the diverse communities that we have in our nation. Thank you so much, and we'll take your questions. Questions? Yes, sir. Have you spoken to the governor since Friday? No, I've not. His staff came to our library to be able to review some of the yearbooks and had um, very perfunctory communication with my staff. I've not had any conversations with him nor his staff. We do not know, and that's part of the investigation. That's why we have the community advisory board and the law firm to be able to get the facts. Do you have any idea how many racist photos, similar photos, or you know, of the like, have been in, in the photos you get that are tallied up? We, I don't have a tally. I know my staff has reviewed it. All I know is that it's, one is not a, is sufficient for me to be alarmed. And, and so at this stage, what we want to do is to take that seriously. There's been a pattern, as I mentioned. Some are repugnant, some are unprofessional. Some are shockingly abhorrent, like I mentioned. And we have to make sure that we can uh, review that, and the board and the law firm will look at that, determine uh, what the numbers are, what the process is, develop an assessment and recommendations for our school to improve. Uh, at this point, um, it depends on the year, from what I understand. I don't know, specifically. The students have had an active engagement in, the, in this school from its inception. It's a community that was created by the community for the community, and as a result of that, was bootstrapped from limited resources with faculty and students that were very closely knit. And through that process, there was a blended responsibility for some functions like that. I have to imagine that some issues that were overseen by faculty, but I do not know which ones, and that's part of the process to get all of the facts of the investigation. I, is in terms of that one photo? No, I've not, I've not received any information. I don't know if my staff has. But my feeling is this happened on Friday. It's been very fluid here, and we're trying to communicate to all the stakeholders in the region. Our faculty, staff, our students. I'm concerned about my minority students here because they're hurt. As I mentioned, our African-American community in this region is outraged, as they should be, as, as well as around the country. So we've tried to create a process. That's what we've done to ensure that there is openness, fairness, but thoroughness in a third-party independent investigation. And I think through that process, we will gain the facts. It will be available to you as it becomes available because it will be reported to our Board of Visitors, which is our fiduciary board, and to the public. I can say that um, 
We're a public institution. We receive public funds, and I, we're not political. And uh, I would want to try to direct our energy to that which Mr. Gometta mentioned about improving the in diversity and inclusion culture of this school. And that's what we've tried to focus on during my tenure here. I don't think I would have made it public because of the political nature of that photograph. And we are a public institution receiving public funds. My, my sense is that we need to focus on that which we need to do to create an environment of inclusion and diversity and have the opportunity to be able to make sure that the next generation of physicians and health professionals have those, hold those values. Uh, Mr. Cullen was recommended by two or three sources um, as an uh, extraordinarily well-regarded re attorney in Virginia, former U.S. attorney, former attorney general of Virginia, uh, the, the chairman of uh, McGuire Woods, a very esteemed law firm, and he had done similar programs like this with other institutions. And Right. Right. And I think that's a great question because we want this to be more than just the review of what happened 30 years ago. We want to know what's happening today and what we can do to make things better. So I think the, both the community advisory board and the law firm are going to work in concert, as I mentioned, collaboratively and in parallel. And through that process, we'll understand why, what, and where. Why could this have happened? You know, who was responsible in terms of the oversight or lack thereof? Because, as I mentioned in one of my press releases, you know, if you don't understand history or don't respect it, you're, you're destined to repeat it. We never want to repeat anything like this again. But more importantly, to review the past, we want to also have an environmental survey of our operations and culture of diversity today. In medicine, and I'm a physician, we always get concerned with one area of the lack of knowledge. It's our blind spot. We don't know what we don't know. In medicine, if you know what you know, it's easy. If you know what, that you don't know, you get a consult. But if you don't know what you don't know, it's dangerous. And that metaphor is, applies to management. And we want to make sure we know where our blind spots are because I can, may not be able to see those. And this is going to be a transparent process so that the investigatory team will look to hopefully uncover opportunities for us to be able to improve the processes, improve our culture, improve the, the ability for us to do this going forward and in perpetuity. So it's not a one and done. This is the metaphor of quality improvement and, and making sure that we can ensure that the work that's done through this process continues beyond my tenure here. Well, I'm not saying, the yearbooks were paid by EVMS funds through st uh, student uh, affairs fee from the students. And uh, there was oversight at the time I understand from last night, actually, there was a medical student who's now a physician who emailed me stating that the, in parallel at the time when I knew what occurred in, now it's very early 2014, when Mr. Gametta came to me with the yearbook saying, look at these pictures. Um, the students in parallel, I was, and I wasn't aware with it, of this, were also looking to see what the value was. It's costly, not a lot of, uh, perhaps a lot of interest, and they were looking to maybe discontinue it independently. Notwithstanding, I saw the content and I made the decision at that time, based on content alone, that we were not going to have any more yearbooks. Would you have the authority to discontinue Yes. Them? Yes. Can I ask you a question? And, and, There's a contract question. Not even as funds. Student fees or student affairs or the funding of activities. So not for dollars, student fees. Yes. I don't know. The, the only contact we've had with the staff is when, they, when the pictures broke, they came to our library 
to be able to look at the actual copy of the 2084 copy of the yearbook so they could look at it uh, in person. So that was the only conversation that was had? Well, it wasn't really a conversation. It's just we wanted to make access that available to it because that which is in our library, we are, we're a public library. Anybody can come in to be able to utilize that. And we wanted to make sure we were co cooperative with his staff. Who did it here? Yeah. I don't know where the origin. Let me let me back up. I have no idea as to what the origin of the, uh, the how that picture got to the internet or whatever blog or or website it was that was posted on the web. And as you know, once something like that is posted on the web, it has a life of its own. And the life of its own eventually landed it here. And as soon as we knew, and I knew, we took action. And um, that was a serious issue. And that's when I wrote, and during the night, the first press release that I provided, uh, expressing my outrage, number one, expressing the fact that we're a health sciences institution here. I carry medicine very seriously in terms of our profession. Um, I'm only in this chair as a president and dean for a short time. But I carry the torch of Hippocrates, of medical ethics, of compassion, of empathy, of integrity of our profession. And so when that is threatened, I have to take action as a physician, as every physician would do. But the question on the screen is that he would be legally responsible um, for the use of your photos, for the who would be able to look through those and balance your books accurately. It's an EVMS yearbook, and so it's an EVMS product. And it was in the EVMS library. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, what we do not want to do, and again, let me be clear, the institution takes responsibility for what occurred in the past, as they do now, as I do now. I do not want to create a sense that this is at all the responsibility of our students. The students are, are not responsible for that the institution is. And whether the institution had appropriate oversight or not is an open question that will be evaluated by the investigatory teams. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. you don't know anyone who leaked the picture from inside, from inside EVMS? No. That it came from in here, that alerted them, that, hey, look what we have. I do not know. I do not know. I have no knowledge of anyone in EVMS leaking anything. How would it have gone out? There are, the, the source was, were classmates that had it previously. It was in the library. It, public, it had pub, public access. But uh, to my knowledge, I have known no one from the EVMS staff, faculty, students that, that uh, initiated the process. She was in politics for 12 years and it never came out. Thank you very much. Thank you.